Well, hello, hello, hello. Uh, I just wanted to create a little video about uh, communion and communion being a lifestyle. Um, I have a couple points I want to point out uh, and then we'll go into communion. Um, for me, I'm using, uh, what is it? I went to ye old Amazon and I bought uh, communion, uh, Holy Communion elements from MeU, M-M-E-Y-O-U. Um, it's, 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 uh, tastes pretty good <laughs> as it compares to other communion elements I've had, but, um, either way, it's, it's about the purpose, um, of communion. Uh, and so just a cracker in the juice. Um, so let's start, uh, with prayer. Uh, Heavenly Father, we just come before you this day thanking you, praising you, King Jesus, because you are worthy, you are holy, and you are awesome. King Jesus, we just ask you to... Your word says that you will never leave us nor forsake us. But Lord, I pray for your presence to rest and remain with us in this moment, Lord God, as we partake of communion together. So King Jesus, we just thank you that you are present, that you are here. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your sacrifice. And as we go to the word and as we go to uh, take communion together, Lord God, I pray so that the elements will be blessed and this time will be blessed as we commune together. In Jesus' precious name I pray, amen, amen. I uh, apologize for the hard drives. I'm not sure if you hear them in the background, but either way, it's all good. Uh, so, uh, one uh, thing I do want to present is the Word. Um, and it's taken from Matthew 26, uh, verses 26 through 29. Uh, so let me bring it up here on the screen. There. Cool, I'll do a side by side. And so, uh, Jesus, uh, uh, in verse 26, uh, and even this is after uh, he uh, talking talking about, uh, I think, Peter, uh, no, uh, Judas uh, saying he was be going to betray him and everything like that. Um, and surely it is, it is an eye and, and all that stuff. Um, and so they're all like thinking within themselves. And then Jesus actually came to the, the main crux of why he wanted to have communion with them in the first place. Um, as a representation of him uh, being broken for him and his blood being spilled out. Uh, and so we take it from verse 26. Um, and as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed it and broke it. He gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my body ooh, of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say to you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on, until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Hmm. King Jesus, I thank you for your word. I thank you for the revelation of your kingdom. The revelation of your life, Lord God, living as a sacrifice for us, Lord God, and the foretelling of you being broken and bruised for us. Bless this time, Lord, and pray your peace be present in this moment, in Jesus' name. All right, so one of the points I wanna uh, bring about is what you eat becomes a part of you. Um, I've heard this saying many times, mainly in the health food uh, world uh, and 
I know my wife is gonna love this because we had a conversation even the other day about um, you know certain things that you uh, like say if there's you have a plate of food and there the majority of it is good but then there are certain parts in the plate that isn't too good for you and so you just sort of push it to the side and you focus on what's good and we were talking about how you uh, when you become a Christian uh, you start seeing, as you see the word here, you start seeing the world around you through the lens uh, of the Holy Spirit. And so allowing the Holy Spirit to filter uh, and through discernment, what is good and what is evil. Um, and so you're able to see the difference through uh, discernment. And so uh, when you eat anything, uh, whether if you know it's the wafer, the juice, if you even eat candy, uh, or even good food, you know, good food's supposed to be, you know, nourishing to your body, bring nutrients and bring health and, and all that stuff to you. Um, it's a benefit for you. Uh, and so when you eat bad things, it does not become a benefit <laughs> for you. Um, but as it pertains to taking part of communion uh, we believe as christians uh, some christians believe differently but uh, in the verse here where uh, jesus said let me get it right here uh, oh it doesn't show my mouse it's fine <laughs> take eat and verse uh, 26 take eat this is my body and then also in 28 where he says, for this is my blood. He didn't say it's a representation of my body. He didn't say it's a representation of my blood. He said, it is. And so we believe that when you partake of the cracker, when you partake of the juice, it no longer is just a cracker or the juice. It becomes the body of Christ and the blood of Christ. And so by partaking that, you inherit the completed work of the cross inside of your body. And it causes your body to be one with his body. Hmm. It speaks about, I'm not sure the verse right now, but... We are crucified with Christ. And we are no longer alive to the world. We are dead to the world and alive to Christ. And so when we are crucified with, with Jesus, we have become a new creature. We, could, we become a new creation alive to the things of the spirit and dead to the things of the world. Um, that's why when people see you alive in Christ, they see you as a new creature. They see you as someone that's different, that's not like everyone else. It's because you're not. It's because you are, um, <laughs> you are uh, someone that has been saved from the clutches of hell. And so that changes a person. And so bring it back to communion. When you, and I've, I've been going through a journey of, as often as I can, uh, communion, uh, taking communion several times a week. And so every time I partake of communion, um, and remembering his sacrifice, remembering his body being broken for us, remembering the blood being poured out for us, it brings about a newness of the sacrifice that he made. Um, granted, there, there have been many others that have went to the cross, but they were murderers. They were people that deserved the sacrifice. I mean, they, they, they paid a price, but it was for their sins and for the things that they did uh, wrongly. I'm not sure if that's a word, but I'm using it right now. And so, Jesus was the, and is, the spotless lamb. 
He is the one that was able to go to the cross for us. Uh, because he <laughs> because he didn't deserve the cross. He didn't deserve the whips on his back. He didn't deserve the crown of thorns and the nails in his hands. We did, though. We sinned. We deserved the fullness of the <laughs> of the um, what do you call it the of the hell to pay for the sins that we did but he said no 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 he took the cup he took a cup of suffering and he said I'll take it and he looked at you yes you wall on the cross and with his last words he says it is finished it is finished today I'm saying to you it is finished okay and so as we partake of the the body and the blood this is going over into my notes yeah, uh, we're remembering Jesus. We're remembering his sacrifice. And by keeping him in remembrance, we're keeping him in the center of our lives. And as we keep Jesus in the, centers, in the center of our lives, we're centered in him. Instead of centered in the world or in self-centeredness. Because you can't save yourself. You could do as much as you can, but to save yourself from your sins? He already paid the price. Because you couldn't. I couldn't. No one could. He did, though. And so, with whatever um, elements that you have, uh, even if it's a piece of bread, or a piece of cracker, or even a cookie. I've done it with cookies before. It's, it's delicious, but it sort of takes you out of the communion if it tastes really good. It's supposed to taste really like um, neutral. And so, at least that's what I gather. Uh, and so I have, this is actually like a matzah uh, cracker. And so I do communion a little bit different. I do it more like a prayer sort of really connecting with the Father in that moment and really connecting with Him and saying, Lord, I'm remembering you. I'm remembering what you did. And then just going from there. So let's begin. Um, Heavenly Father, we thank you. Ooh, there he is. Hmm. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your sacrifice. Thank you, King Jesus, for the blood that you poured out for the body, your body that was broken for us. Oh, King Jesus, as we remember you, Lord God, we remember, Lord God, uh, that your body was broken. And I like to break the body. Mm. Mm. Breaking the cracker, breaking the bread in remembrance of Jesus. Now he was broken for us. So King Jesus, we thank you. Ooh. We thank you for the crown of thorns that you willingly took for us. You willingly, Lord God, took the slaps, you took the beatings, you took the pulling of your beard. You took the pulling huh, of all your clothes. Lord God, you were ripped, torn. Your body was bruised and beaten for me. Mm. Yeah, I'm not shaking. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. for being the sacrifice, the spotless lamb. And it's through 
that sacrifice, Lord God, we're able to have communion with the Father. Lord Jesus, when you said it was finished on the cross, you said it to us. You said it to me, Lord God. You said it is finished. Hmm. And by saying it is finished, you're saying, I'm believing that you're saying that that court case is finished. Ha. <laughs> That that cancer regimen is finished because you are healed. That that the relationship that you're in is finished because she doesn't want you to be beaten, baby. Hmm. You're worth more than that. And by saying it is finished, she's saying all the financial problems that you're going through is finished. Because he is going to make a way. I decree and I prophesy that now to whoever is listening, going through financial situations... Hmm, I declare to you, it is finished. He paid the price so that you can have financial freedom if you would just receive. Lord Jesus, I believe that when you said it is finished, all of my diseases, all of my illnesses in my <laughs> that happened in the past, the present, or even in the future, the healing is available right now. The restoration of families and relationships are available right now. Because your body was broken and because your blood was poured out, that healing is available today. So King Jesus, as we partake of your body, we don't partake of the suffering. We don't partake of the nails. We don't partake <laughs> of the whippings or being torn. Because you already paid the price. And so what we do partake of is the freedom. We partake of the, the redemption. And yes, even the resurrection, Lord God. Because when we accept you as Lord and Savior, we say goodbye to the world and hello, Jesus. Ha! Ha! We say hello to eternal life. And so we're alive to you, King Jesus, and dead to the world. So, Lord, we partake of your broken body. And we receive the redemption and the finished work with the cross. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So, Lord Jesus, we just partake now of your blood that was poured out for us for the remission of sins. So that we may have freedom in you. So that we may have life in you. So that the power of sin, hell, death, and the grave would no longer have power over us. We could say no to the enemy. We could say no to the world. And freely be able to say yes to you, Lord God, because... You are alive because you have been resurrected from the dead. Lord God, you went to hell, Sheol, and you took the keys of hell, death, and the grave Ooh, so that we may have life and life abundantly. So Lord Jesus, I thank you for your blood that was poured out for us. Thank you, Jesus, that was poured out as a sacrifice. Mm. To bring redemption, to bring restoration, to bring hope. 
Lord Jesus, your blood, your blood poured out is hope for us. And hope not just for a generation, but for every generation that is to come. Hmm. And you saw that. In the garden, you saw that, Lord. And you said, yes. You saw humanity and the struggles. You took on a body of flesh so that you can ooh, recognize and be <laughs> able to fully understand our, our troubles and the strife that we have to go in day in, day out. In Lord Jesus, you, you said yes, out of pure love. <laughs> oh, Lord God, the purity of your love, the purity of your sacrifice. There is no other, Lord. No one else was worthy, so you had to go to the cross and pay the ultimate sacrifice with your life. <laughs> and because whew, you took that upon yourself, <laughs> we no longer had to spill the blood of other lambs and goats and and even just for a time, those things would would be um, good enough, but it wasn't for eternity. Lord, through your sacrifice, we have ret eternal redemption and a restoration of God and man. So, Lord Jesus, I thank you for the sacrifice that you made on Calvary. We say yes to the healing. We say yes to the redemption. We say yes to the restoration. We say yes to the freedom. And we say yes hmm, to you. And as we partake of the blood of the new covenant, we say, and we bring upon ourselves, yes, the finished work of the cross, but also healing to our bodies, healing to our blood, and healing to our minds and any form of corruption that the world may have shoved within us to cause self to be of highest importance and cause the knowledge of Jesus or the knowledge of your word to be of a lesser importance. May that shift happen today. May this communion be a catalyst for change in our lives and in our spirits. And may we come to a greater understanding, Lord Jesus, of what it means to be a child of the Most High God. And have a reverence <laughs> of your presence and of communion. So King Jesus, we partake now of your blood. We receive into our bodies the fullness of your healing power that comes through communion. Let's partake together in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So, King Jesus, we thank you for this time. Pray so you could bless all those that are watching now and in later streams, Lord. I pray for your peace to be upon them. Pray for your Holy Spirit to lead them and direct them. Allow their ears to hear what you want them to hear. Allow their eyes to see what you want them to see. And I come against any confusion. I come against any kind of hmm, problems or situations that keep on rising up in their lives that are demonic based 
or even witchcraft based or centralized uh, in other, from other sources that are not from you. Help them to be able to get out of any rut they go, they're in and they're stuck in. Help them to find restoration in you, peace in you, hope in you, freedom in you. I decree and declare right now freedom for all those that are going through traumatic situations, are going through PTSD, that they're going through trials and tribulations that are too much to bear. The blood oh, that Jesus poured out is, the blood is enough for you. The sacrifice that Jesus made on the cross is enough for you and it will always be enough. It will always be enough. Say yes to Jesus and you will see such a transformation in your life that is incomparable to anything that you ever uh, be able to receive in your whole life. He will change your life if you allow him to. If you allow him to enter in, he will change your life. And so right now, for all those that are watching, that they don't have Jesus in their hearts as Lord and Savior, just follow me in this simple prayer. Say, Jesus, I'm a sinner. Save me from my sins. I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins and I receive now eternal life as I am now a child of God. Forgive me of my past Forgive me of my past decisions. I repent of my former ways and I receive now the freedom that comes with being, being your son or daughter, whichever. In Jesus' name, amen. So if you prayed that prayer with me, welcome to the family. Find yourself a good church. Get yourself a Bible. Uh, I prefer to use New King James or NIV, whichever. Older, if preferred, because for some reason they keep on changing the Bible, even on the Bible app. But anyway, um... This felt led to, to do all that, but uh, let's continue praying. Um, so, Heavenly Father, just thank you for this time, this time to do communion with all those that are watching. And and uh, afterwards, when they watch the, the stream, bless them, Lord. I pray for your peace to abound in their lives. Holy Spirit, lead them and direct them. I pray so that freedom will follow in their lives. Healing, and restor restoration, even resurrections will follow in their lives from death to life. Lord God, I'm looking forward to hearing all the testimonies and hearing the goodness of Jesus in their lives as they continue to seek your face and follow you. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right. I think we are good. <laughs> God bless you guys. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day. And until next time, God bless you. Bye now.